Well, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. So good to see everyone here this evening. So glad to have you all. Um, welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online as well. When we rise and greet those around us with the peace of Christ. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. With abundant generosity, God created the universe, the earth, all creatures, and each of us. He daily blesses and sustains us and all creation. Yet by our sin, God's good creation is broken. So let us confess our sin and hear again God's recreating word of forgiveness. We confess to you, O Lord, that we are naturally inclined to sin and self-centeredness. We have sinned in thought, word, and deed. In addition to the wrong things we have done, we have also left many good things undone. And like the nine lepers, we fail to thank you as we should. 
Take heart. Jesus has come to forgive your sins, and he will one day return and make all creation new. With joy, I, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus, declare to you his forgiveness. By the command of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray responsibly. For your goodness and mercy to us, O Lord, we give you thanks. For forgiving our sins through Christ, we give you thanks. For your spirit who breathes your life into our hearts, we give you thanks. 
Guide us to live each day in gratitude to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we bring our offering forward. Filled with gratitude for all of God's mercy and provision, let us pray for the church, for our nation, for our local community, and for our own needs, filled with thanksgiving that Jesus has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Please rise as you are able. For the church throughout the world, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. For the pastors, teachers, and all church workers of our synod. We give you thanks, O Lord. For missionaries far away and in difficult circumstances in our own nation. We give you thanks, O Lord. For the elected leaders of our nation, state, and local community. We give you thanks, O Lord. For doctors and nurses, firefighters and police officers, construction and restaurant workers, teachers and counselors, and everyone else who contributes to the well-being of our community. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. For your presence with those who are sick and dying or mourning, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. For the people in our lives who love us and those who we are called to love, families, friends, co-workers, and neighbors, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. For safe travel for those gathering to celebrate Thanksgiving Day, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. For the ongoing generosity of this congregation, which provides word and sacrament ministry, Christ-centered community, and service to our neighbors, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the life and witness of those who have gone before us in faith and now rest from their labors eternally in the arms of Jesus, we give you thanks, O Lord. We entrust our prayers to you, gracious Father, who with your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit reign over us forever as God of all. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who graciously healed ten lepers as a sign of his one day restoring all creation through his death and resurrection. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs>
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. provide for all of us gathered here today. You bless all creation with your gracious provision. Guide our hearts and minds to acknowledge all your gifts and to live in constant thanksgiving to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor your fathers know, that he, might make you, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, of springs flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be, known, be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you, Philippians, yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the 
way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated for the end. to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, grant to me your Holy Spirit that my words be your words. Grant to your people your Holy Spirit that they would hear your words and be edified by them. In Jesus' name. Amen. So there was a time, one time in uh, high school, when my dad and I were golfing. And this was, this was back when I was really bad at golf. Unlike now when I'm only pretty bad. At golf. But on this particular day, I was having a pretty good round. Early in the, early in the round, I, I had sunk a really long putt from a long way away, and my dad looked at me and he said, good shot, son. And I said, yeah, I just walked up to the ball. I saw the spot where I wanted to hit the ball. I hit it, it hit that spot, and it curved right into the hole. It was, it was great. Later on in the round, I hit a, a really nice drive straight down the middle of the fairway. My dad said, good shot, son. And I said, yeah, I just approached the ball. I stayed calm and collected. I was a slow swing. I made solid contact, keeping my arm straight. Good follow through, went straight down the fairway. Yeah, it was good. A little bit later in the round, I hit a shot out of the bunker. And it was, a, it was a good shot out of the bunker, landed just a few feet from the hole, easy, makeable putt. My dad said, good shot, son. And I said, yeah, I, I walked up to the ball. I dug my heels in. He said, stop. Just say thank you. <laughs> Just say thank you. Saying thank you or, or giving thanks, really, being, being thankful, uh, showing thankfulness is oftentimes a, a very hard thing for us to do. Now, we all say thank you probably 10, 12 times a day for various random things, but actually showing that thankfulness and, and being truly grateful and appreciative, sometimes that's, that's a little easier said than done. Like my golf game 
back then. I, I wanted to justify myself, show how great that I was as I was, as I was playing golf. And I find it more than a little ironic on a day when we're supposed to be showing thanks and giving thanks to our Lord uh, that we, we tend to focus on our appetites. That we stuff ourselves full of food, maybe even to the point of gluttony. Maybe, though, the best way of, of saying thank you to somebody is actually using the gift that we have been given. Using the gift that you have been given. With Christmas right around the corner, we will all be receiving gifts. Uh, many of us will receive gifts that we will love and cherish, but many of us will also receive gifts that we won't be so thankful of. I'm reminded of um, the movie A Christmas Story, if you've seen that. Little, little Ralphie, cutest little kid, got these great big glasses, and he opens up a present from his aunt, and inside is a pink bunny outfit. I mean, full-on outfit, head to toe, put the, put the hood on, it's got the ears sticking straight up. Ralphie hated this thing. His mom said, go upstairs and try it on. We want to see what it looks like. And he came downstairs, and his dad looked at him, and he said, the boy looks like a pink nightmare. <laughs> Ralphie was not appreciative of that gift. And maybe understandably so, because even, even though he received a gift that he wasn't so happy to get, there still he still could have been thankful. But he couldn't get that thing off fa he couldn't get that thing off fast enough. He ran upstairs as soon as he could and took that costume off, and I bet he never wore it again the rest of his life. Giving thanks, showing thankfulness is often a very hard thing for us to do. But we see in our gospel reading today an example of what it should look like. The miracle of the ten lepers. We see true thanks in the actions of the one Samaritan leper who was healed and who returned to Jesus. The one Samaritan leper who put his gift to use. After Jesus healed him and the other nine lepers, only he returned to Jesus to give him thanks. And as he's there, the, the, the text says, Jesus, excuse me, Jesus says, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Another way to translate this is, and, and I think maybe even a better, a, a better, more a deeper, meaningful, more meaningful way to translate this could be, rise and go your way. Your faith has saved you. Rise and go your way, your faith has saved you. You see, the true gift that the Samaritan leper had received was not the cleansing of his skin or the removal of his disease. The true gift that he had been given was the cleansing of his soul and the removal of his sin. Your faith has saved you. Once he realized what happened, he put that faith to work. And he returned to the source of his faith, the source of his healing. He returned at the, to the feet of Jesus and just said, thank you. Thank you. You know, when I first got here, I'll admit that I was um, a little confused as to why we had a, a church service on Thanksgiving Eve and Thanksgiving morning. My, my last church didn't have a Thanksgiving service. I, was, I wondered why we would celebrate a secular holiday here in God's holy house. My thinking on that has changed, though. Not because I'm happy to celebrate a secular holiday, but because every day is a day of thanksgiving for our God. And any time we have the opportunity to gather together and receive his gifts, we should do it. This is a wonderful day of thanksgiving. So why not we Christians on this day of national thanksgiving, why shouldn't we make a big deal about the one who has given us so many good gifts? Why shouldn't we gather together and sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, raising our voices in thanks and praise to the Lord our God, the true source of every good blessing and every good gift? It's just wonderful that we are able to come together today and celebrate this day of Thanksgiving. And there is no more appropriate time to get together and celebrate Thanksgiving. There's no more appropriate thing to do, I should say, than to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, as it is sometimes called. For most of us, tomorrow will be a day full of 
family, friends, and feasting. But the church has a greater feast that we celebrate far more than just once, one day out of the year. It's a greater feast where we do gather together again with friends and family. And we get to feast on the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a, a Greek word. It comes from a Greek word that literally means to give thanks. And we actually have it in our reading today. Luke 17, 16 says that the Samaritan returned and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, Eucharisting Jesus. When the Samaritan realized the gift that he had been giving, and not just the cleansing of his skin, not just the removal of his disease, but when he realized the faith that he had been granted in Jesus, he immediately put that faith to work, returning to the source of the faith, faith bowing down at the feet of Jesus, saying, thank you. Returning to the source. And that's exactly what we do when we gather together like this. We return to the source of our faith. The source of our cleansing. The cleansing of our souls. We come to his table where he is present. Where his very body and blood are given to us. Jesus was at this table today. Is in this place right now. You dined with him, giving him thanks in the Eucharist. You see, this meal is just surrounded and overflowing with thanksgiving. The communion liturgy begins with me saying, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And you respond by saying, it is right to give him thanks and praise. And then I continue. It is indeed good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And then, in the middle of the liturgy, we have Jesus' own words giving thanks to his God. On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had Eucharisted, when he had given thanks to the Lord. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had Eucharisted, he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. And then at the end we sing, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And then we have a prayer of thanksgiving. On your end, the Lord's Supper is all about giving thanks. It is overflowing with thankfulness. You are overflowing with thankfulness. The primary thing of the Lord's Supper is to receive his gifts, forgiveness, life, salvation, to have your strength, is that your faith strengthened. And then once that faith, once you have received that gift, the faithful response is to bow down at the feet of Jesus and just say thank you. Your faith crying out to your Lord, thank you, Lord. So while it is often hard to know how to give thanks, it is easy in this case for you, brothers and sisters in Christ. You know exactly how to just say thank you. You come to his table. You eat his body drink his blood, your faith is strengthened. And then just as he told the Samaritan, rise, go your way, your faith has saved you, he says the same thing to you as you walk away from his table, as you walk away from his house. Rise, go your way, your faith has saved you. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.